hunger is insidious in this country. I didn't realize that hunger was such a huge problem. Hunger is not very obvious. You have to really look for it. You see people in the street, you know, they don't talk about it. You, you don't know. People say, well, I've never met a hungry person in Boston. Well, in fact, you have. That's the person who serves you at the fast food restaurant, the person who scrubs out your office, the person who cleans the hotel room. It's not starving kids on the street, it's elders who are making decisions between medicine and food. It's moms who are making decisions between diapers and formula. Many of these families are working families, but given our cost of living, they simply, on the basis of their income, cannot make the ends meet. The most prevalent killers in this population are type 2 diabetes and heart disease because when you can get food, it tends to be high-fat, high-calorie food with very low nutrient density. And if the doctors are asking them to eat healthier and they don't have the money to purchase the proper type of food, then the doctor is just giving them a prescription that's not going to get filled. But if we have a food pantry in the hospital, the doctor can send them to the food pantry to pick up food free of cost. Boston Medical Center's whole mission is to serve the underserved. To address health in the, in the population we serve, we really need to kind of be on the balls of our feet with a whole range of services. I serve exclusively malnourished children, mainly under the age of five, most of them much younger, under the age of two or three. Our clinical nutritionist, who was visiting the homes of all these malnourished children, came to me and said, I am so tired of having women burst into tears when I tell them what their children need to eat. She started with, uh, with sort of her own kind of personal fundraising effort. And so it was her vision that started this food pantry. We sort of depended on surplus food and food we got through food drives. So very quickly, the need outstripped that. So the hospital decided to create this newer, more centralized food pantry. We thought we would be feeding, you know, 500 families of kids within our pediatric service. We're currently serving an average of 7,000 per month. It's about between 1,800 and 2,000 families, but we feed the whole family. We just don't provide food for the patient. We've been here for, this will be the 11th year. Lachman Haral has run our food pantry since its inception. He is a very unflappable guy. And he deals wonderfully with the patients. He provides continuity because the physicians get to know him, because the patients get to know him, and his staff. He's really terrific. The bulk of our food comes from the Greater Boston Food Bank, which is down the street from us. That's the main warehouse for the food pantries and soup kitchens in the Boston area. We pick up food there twice a week, and we bring in about 10,000 pounds of food each week from the food bank. The food bank mainly gets uh, food from large supermarket chains and also from the government, USDA products. Without the food bank, we wouldn't be able to operate the food pantry. We do get donations, smaller donations from uh, different donors, but the bulk of our food comes from the Greater Boston Food Bank. It's pallets of food as opposed to boxes. He's really the heart and soul and the general of that pantry with backup from the hospital nutrition department. Food pantry latchman. Families are looking for more fresh fruits and vegetables. And over the past couple of years, they've been very, very good with providing fresh produce and fruits for the participants. And uh, we are very fortunate. Most of our produce are coming from the New England area. We also have a garden on our rooftop at the hospital that's being farmed by the Boston Natural Areas Network. And we receive fresh vegetables from them twice a week, all summer. And they've been very, very helpful to us because the families love fresh produce. Over the years, we have grown, so we had to develop a partnership somewhere to assist us with storing perishables. And that's where the food service department came in. They gave us a little part of their walk-in refrigerator and freezer to store our perishables. 
patients can only come to our food pantry with a prescription. It's not like a church basement where you can line up and get a bag of food. We have a form in our electronic medical record called Food Pantry, and all we have to do is click on that form and put the patient's name and the reason why we are prescribing the food pantry. So for example, if I prescribe a patient for the food pantry who's obese, the food pantry will know that that patient needs to get fruits and vegetables and lean protein. Based on what's on the referral and the number of people in their household, we put cards together for the family so they can see what they're getting. Jessica, you want to help? Yeah, you can help. When they come to the food pantry, they wouldn't see sugar cereal, they wouldn't see fruit punch or chocolate. So it's a, it's a change of their behavior to choose healthier foods instead of food that's high in calories and fat. They pick up food twice a week. We give them three to four days worth of food each visit. So they get a week's worth of food from us. They're also learning how to cook these foods in the food demonstration kitchen, which is right next door. The providers usually are the ones that encourage their patients to come to the food demo kitchen. All right, so we're making apple crisp today. We're celebrating fall here. The vision was to have the food pantry and the food demonstration kitchen both open up at the same time. So the, the idea is to give these patients the food that they need and then teach them how to cook and make healthy food and we're gonna make some sauteed kale with tomatoes and peppers and chicken with a creamy mustard sauce using evaporated skim milk. The food that comes into the pantry is my primary source of food for the demonstration kitchen. We are the only food demo kitchen and uh, linked with a pantry in the United States that we know of. Yeah. Tracy Berg is the is a registered dietitian and a chef. So she works with our patients to help them take the, the food that's available in the food pantry to create nutritious and healthy meals. A lot of people, especially if they're new to whatever their disease state may be, diabetes, uh, cancer rehab patients, or heart patients, uh, they may not be aware of the fact that some of the foods that they are eating and the way they're making it is not healthy. I used to deep fry my chicken in vegetable oil now. Right now I bake it and if I do fry it, I cook it in canola oil. I could know all I learned is much healthier for you, right? It's really important to be able to show them how to make those changes. I didn't know how to really cook my food the healthy way until I came here. We start right there by cutting back on some fat, right? We just spray the pan instead of, you know, my mom always used to break out the Crisco and... She's so in love with healthy cooking that she exudes that to the patients. She's incredibly energetic, and, um, and she also makes it look easy. Like, I watch her chop things, and I think, I wish I could do that. All right, so we just chop, chop, chop our apples. We'll just pop this in the oven. It's a lot of fun. It's nice to have people taste the food right in front of you, and then I ask them, how do you like it? Hopefully they like it, so, you know, that feedback is always good. Our staff know when she's here, and they definitely stop by for a taste. Seeing the ripple effects of what a food demonstration can do is, is really neat. I had a dinner at my house, and I had my daughters come over to cook with me, and I showed them how, and um, they liked it. One of the biggest thing when families come to the food pantry, or why they wouldn't come, I would say is pride and dignity. We think that having a doctor or a nurse send you to the food pantry or offer the food pantry to you removes some of the stigma associated with being hungry. We serve a very diverse population here at Boston Medical Center, and we take a lot for granted. There might be squash, zucchini that families don't know how to prepare, or butternut squash, because they've never used it in their country. Lachin will say, you know, the people from such and such a place won't take canned goods. You have to try to re-educate people that I know in your country cans are dangerous. But I can tell you in this country, I will give my child food out of a can. But if you didn't know in the first place, you would just think, look, these are people who don't have enough and they won't take the canned goods. So they try it, they take it home and try it because they're always excited about you know new things and especially vegetables that they could try. I have people who come in and just don't eat fruit, for example. A lot of people don't like to eat vegetables. You'll see people who come in and have never seen zucchini or even a green pepper, a fresh green pepper. 
And so when I do my food demonstrations, I always have the whole food in front of me so they can see what it looks like and I'll teach them how to select it in the grocery store to make sure that it's fresh and, and, and encourage them to buy foods that are in season. Just take, you know, a little piece. See how it tastes. What I see in my practice is patients come back and have lost 10% of their body weight, for example, and become healthier. And what do I mean by healthier? I will be able to take them off insulin, uh, sulfonylureas that they usually take for their type 2 diabetes because they've lost weight. I was going to have the weight loss surgery. They, was, they had scheduled me to have the weight loss surgery, but I was scared. You know, I was really scared to have that surgery. But by me learning how to eat healthy, I lost the weight on my own. And I, I don't have to have that surgery. You know, and I'm happy about that. And I kept it, kept it off. And that's amazing too, by eating healthy and cooking healthy. The Preventive Food Pantry really is an example of our mission to provide exceptional care without exception because it really reflects our broad view of health. It really reflects an understanding that our patients have challenges we can only begin to think about as we're caring for whatever brought them to our doors. And it really reflects our commitment to get people healthy and keep them well. In fact, they're getting healthier and their medical expenses go down. We have been able to mitigate the financial burden associated with this program, largely through our partnership with the Greater Boston Food Bank and also a very strong philanthropic support from, this, from folks with the, around the city of Boston. And once a year, the Monday before Thanksgiving, we have this dinner called Food for Thought Dinner, where we raise about a million dollars for programs within the hospital, including the food pantry. It's definitely a community builder in many ways, and it's something that everybody who works at Boston Medical Center is justifiably proud of. 5,000 people wear a BMC ID badge, and if you stop any of them and say, what's different about Boston Medical Center? Almost the first thing they'll say to a person is, well, we have this therapeutic food pantry. And I think it gives the physicians in this hospital a sense that we are about prevention. We don't just hand out pills. We actually look at the whole patient and find out why the patient got to where they are and try to prevent it, try to, try to prevent it with healthy living and healthy food. As the healthcare industry begins to tackle the opportunities that come along with more patients having access to our system, I think we're going to have to come up with creative solutions like a therapeutic food pantry that will help patients get healthy and stay well because it will be in our economic interest as providers to make sure the patients get better and stay well. And I think the food pantry really is kind of one very strong example of how we can, we can tangibly demonstrate to our patients there are ways to stay healthy and proper nutrition is one of them. So what I'm doing is a stir fry with just the leaves. Look at all the different colors. Pound the chicken down a little bit. And uh, then we're gonna cut up some onion and garlic. When I was a kid, I used to love to have just tomato sandwiches. We just put some pepper right on the meat here. And we're gonna finish the chicken off with some green onions. We put our greens on here. And we're just gonna steam down a little bit. Get that cooked down now for our sauce. I'm very proud of myself, you know. And I thank Tracy for that. <laughs> I really do.